TPS software is a practice management solution that can be an essential tool to any growing accounting firm. But what is practice management? It can mean many things to many people. Time and billing, of course, makes up a large part of practice management, and TPS has over 300 standard reports that can provide information on employee productivity, firm billing realization, accounts receivable, and profitability by work, employees, clients, and partners. Check out our overview video to learn more about the time and billing features of TPS. But beyond time and billing, practice management encompasses client relation management, due date tracking, workflow, and document management. That's a lot to take in, so let's use an easy example that most accountants can relate to, a small numbered company with a December 31st year end. With this type of client, the accountant has to remember a number of things during the year that involves tasks assigned to him and other staff members. Trying to manage all of that can get complicated, and people can get creative using a combination of Excel spreadsheets, the Outlook calendar, or paper notes that follow the file around. In TPS, we have a very simple method, and we call it due dates, and there are several other features within our program that tie into our due dates, resulting in even more efficient practice management. So let's go back to that example of the December 31st year-end company. In Canada, a December 31st corporation needs to file their return within six months, so that's the end of June. If taxes are owed, then the payment is due within three months, which would be March 31st. So what that means to the accountant is that sometime in December, he has to notify the client that their year-end is approaching and remind them of all the documents needed to complete the year-end and when they need to be delivered to your office. In February, the T4s need to be created and sent out. And then in March, the filing should get done if there are taxes owing. If not, it can be extended out to June. So how do we manage that in TPS? If you go to the client side of things, it all starts in the client properties due date tab. Here you'll set up all the recurring tasks or due dates that you typically do for each individual client. For example, this client has three tasks or due dates. We've got sending out the year-end letter asking for all necessary documents, preparing the T4s, and then filing the corporate taxes. So some clients could have two or three due dates, while others could have many more because you do more things for them, such as their payroll, monthly bookkeeping, or the GST, HST sales tax returns. All of the entries in the client due date tab are basically the rules for what recurring work you'll do for the client and they'll be used to populate our due date calendar, which is similar to a big spreadsheet for the entire office to share. If you go to the due date calendar, by default it's always going to show you all of your clients due dates that fall within the current month, but that's just the default and you can always change the date range to see entries coming due in future months. Getting back to our example of the December 31st corporation, let's say it's the beginning of December and we need to get the year-end letter out. Here in the due date calendar, we can see that we have four clients that need their year-end letter sent out to them. TPS makes it easy to send those year-end letters by setting up some key things back in the client properties. On the general tab, you can see we've got December 31st assigned as the year-end for this client. And to maximize functionality, you could set up categories for all the services you provide your clients, for example, T1s, T2s, T4s, GST, annual, quarterly, monthly. That way, you could make use of categories and year-ends to filter your client list and send letters to just those clients that meet your filter. So, I'll go back to Tools, Mass Mailing Letters, which is what I would use to generate Word documents to mail out to my clients, or Email Mass Mailing Letters if I want to generate a PDF attachment to email the client. I'll choose my category of T2, but I want to filter it down to just those with the year end of December 31st, and I'm going to select my custom Word template for my corporate year end letter, and then click Generate. Now I can create PDF letters and email them as attachments to these four clients. Once I send the letter, I could go back to the due date calendar and I can mark these four lines as completed. And rather than going one line at a time and marking them complete, I can use this icon and I can assign the same completion date to all four with one click of my mouse. We can also change the status using the traffic light icon to complete. 
let's fast forward to February and we can see that all of our T4s are coming due at the end of the month. As well, we have some corporate tax, payroll, and bookkeeping coming due. Now, remember that the client ID, client name, engagement, work code, due date, hours, and description fields are all populated by the rules stored back in the due date tab of the client properties. The rest of the fields in the records will all be information that your staff will be updating as they go. For example, you may want to divvy up the T4 preparation to a few employees. You can assign employees one at a time, or you can select several lines and assign the same employee. Then you can select other lines and assign to a different employee. When you receive the year-end documents from the client, employees can record the date the paperwork was received. This may help prioritize getting those clients' work out first that brought their paperwork in first. You may also want to make a note that all the documents required have been received. However, if there's something missing, employees can type in the notes what they're waiting for, such as last month's bank statement. That way, when you talk with the client, you have access to everything that's going on and can remind them that, hey, we're waiting for your bank statements. If it's something time sensitive, you may want someone to follow up with the client. TPS offers a client log with alerts feature which supplements the due dates. In this instance, we know that the client is missing some bank statements, but did anybody contact the client to bring in the statements? Is there a follow-up date so we can make sure an action is being taken by an employee and it's not going to slip through the cracks? With the follow-up date, an employee will be alerted until a completion date is entered. We'll discuss client log in a bit more detail shortly. Let's say that on this November 30th year-end corporation, I know there will not be any taxes owing, and so there's no rush to file this by the three-month deadline of February 28th. I can use the extension due field to push this out to May 31st, the sixth-month deadline. And that way, when I move my calendar forward into May, this record appears, and it's not going to slip through the cracks. I'll go back to February, and I'll assign an employee to this record, and update the status that we are waiting. The extension filed field is technically for our US clients so that they can record the date they notified the IRS that they're taking an extension. Let's look down at the bottom and we can see our bookkeeping entries. The manager preparer field gives you one extra level of staff assignment for the task. Samantha Moore is the manager who oversees the bookkeeping work, but the other employees like Harley Hansen and Bruce Howard, they're the employees that are actually assigned to do the work. Let's get back to our original example of our corporate client with the March 31st due date and move forward to March. Here we can see that our client brought in all the necessary documentation on January 10th. When the documents were all brought in, the due date was assigned to the employee responsible, Alex, and a status was assigned as well. This way, when Alex comes into the due date calendar, he can filter the screen by employee to see just the work that is assigned to him. He can also do a secondary filter of just those that are incomplete, so he knows exactly what's on his to-do list. If he wants to see all, we click all, and then remove the employee filter. Once Alex is done preparing the corporate tax return and it needs to be reviewed, he can reassign it to the next employee, Donna White, and then he can select a status such as review. Then when Donna next comes into this screen, she'll be able to see that this is assigned to her. You can see how the same due date can be reassigned to two, three, four, or five employees in the firm as it makes its way through the process towards completion. When the due date is completed, the last person who does the review or does the assembly and hands it to the client will mark that the record is completed and then change the status one last time. If at any time you need to email a client, you can simply click on the yellow email icon, add a subject line, and TPS will launch a new email via Outlook and also log that the email was sent in the client's client log. So that's a simplified explanation of how the due dates work. 
Everybody in the firm gets to see what's outstanding, where it is in the workflow, and who's responsible for it. But because there are often multiple steps in the process of completing a due date, Client Log can be used to ensure that nothing slips through the cracks or off an employee's radar. Now, for instance, if you need to let an employee know that there is a task within a due date that needs to be taken care of, then you could select the due date, right click, and go to Client Log. Client Log allows you to add a note and type in a description of what needs to be done. You can assign it to a specific employee who needs to be notified that there is something that requires their attention by a specific follow-up date. So this way, when Donna next logs into the program, she's going to be alerted that there's something in the client log that needs her attention. I'll show you that when I log off and log back in as Donna White, she's going to get the alert that there's something in the client log that needs her attention. She'll get this alert every time she logs into TPS until she enters a completion date. The really nice part of the due dates in TPS is that the record simply moves along within your firm just like a regular piece of paper would. In our calendar you can track when it was received, which employee it's been assigned to, and where it is in your process. Which brings me to the statuses. The statuses are all self-defined, so you create the statuses or steps that your office follows. Then, when a task needs to move to the next step, you simply reassign it to the employee next in the workflow until it's done and marked as complete. So as you can see, TPS is so much more than just a time and billing program. We provide the key tools for effective practice management that help you run as efficiently as possible. Be sure to check out our other videos that help you understand how simple yet powerful TPS can be in helping you manage your practice. If you have any questions, drop us a line at support at tpssoftware.com or call the toll-free number at 1-888-877-2231.